It's Hyper Halloween. Last up for my Creatures from Beyond week is Cloverfield. This 2008 found footage movie did pretty well in the box office and ticks a lot of boxes for movies that I like. Movies such as giant monster movies, found footage, and horror. Cloverfield was written by Drew Goddard, directed by Matt Reeves, and produced by Brian Burke and J.J. Abrams. It's a movie that's said to be Blair Witch meets Godzilla, and I think that's pretty accurate. As I already mentioned about my favorite movie elements, I think Cloverfield is able to blend shaky cam horror elements with giant monsters pretty seamlessly. Let's talk about the plot. This film starts us with a US government warning, stating that this contains multiple sightings of a case designated as Cloverfield. The film that is shown is said to be footage from a camcorder that was recovered from an area formerly known as Central Park. So a lot of stuff apparently goes down in this movie. The footage starts us off in a bedroom with two main characters, Rob and Beth, talking about random things they'd like to do. Cloverfield has these scenes sprinkled throughout the film. The main footage of the movie was actually taped over Rob's recording of his day with Beth. You see, Rob just took a job in Japan, and he's romantically interested in his close friend Beth. We fast forward to the present where Rob's brother and friends are throwing him a going away party. Beth was invited to this party, and she brought her new boyfriend. Sheesh. Apparently Rob never called her after they finally did the nasty, and he just expected her to still go after him. Double sheesh. <laughs> alright, alright. I know, I know. Let's get to the monster. During the party, after the boyfriend-girlfriend drama, a massive earthquake shakes the apartment that the party is in, and there's a power outage for a brief second. An oil tanker capsized near the Statue of Liberty, and some of the partygoers head to the roof to see if they can see more. Everyone theorizes what could be happening, but then the coolest scene of the movie happens. There's an explosion in the distance, which causes debris to fly towards the roof, and drives the party to go outside. There's mass panic, and then the Statue of Liberty's head is thrown through the air and lands near the group. This is probably the most iconic scene in the movie, and it really drives home that a threat is out there. Well, that and after the statue's head lands, we get a glimpse of a giant monster. It knocks over a nearby building, and the crowd runs inside of nearby buildings to avoid dust and debris. After the dust settles, the main characters head out and survey the area, and are routed to the Brooklyn Bridge for evacuation. We see that the monster was what capsized the oil tanker, and we also see the damage done to the Statue of Liberty. Rob gets a call from Beth, and learns that she's actually stuck in her apartment and unable to escape. Apparently she had left the party early. Rob wants to turn around and go back, but his friends and brother think that they should move on. Unfortunately for Rob's brother, the monster decides to surface under the bridge and knocks down the portion that he's standing on. Rob immediately gets over the loss of his brother and tries to call Beth back. His phone dies, but he's able to find another battery in a nearby store. Rob has a voicemail from Beth saying that she's hurt and she can't move. The group decides to save Beth, but of course, she lives in the middle of the city. So, they decide to go underground and walk through the subway tunnels. It's a smart idea at first, but they soon run into these smaller creatures that were attached to the larger monster. The group barely makes it out alive, and one member of the group has a bad bite from the smaller monsters. The group eventually comes into contact with the military clean zone, and the friend that has the bite is rushed off into a quarantine area, and not a moment too soon as she promptly explodes. The group is informed that the government is planning on destroying the area to neutralize the monster. A soldier lets the group run off to find Beth though, and he tells them where a chopper will be so they can get away. The group eventually reaches Beth's place, and they find the apartment is leaning on an adjacent building. This is only important because, well, Beth lives on the top floor. To speed up the rest of the review, the group rescues Beth, makes it to the chopper, fly off, are attacked by the monster, some die in this attack, and a subsequent attack, and then Beth and Rob are left to die via explosion. And that's the end of the movie. They blow up. It's kind of a sad ending, really. Somber ending aside, let's talk about some cool trivia. I mentioned earlier that the footage flips back and forth between current events and scenes between Rob and Beth. The Rob and Beth scenes provide a little more backstory between the two characters, but that's not why I wanted to bring this up. There are actually stills of other movies spliced into the footage of Cloverfield. There's a still image from King Kong, 
Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, and Them. All movies that feature a giant monster. I'm actually surprised that there wasn't a Godzilla mentioned in the movie in some way. Unlike Godzilla, where we have a clear origin of the creature, depending on which movie you're watching, the origins of the Cloverfield creature are not explained in this film, or any of its subsequent sequels for that matter. But there is one scene where we see something fall from the sky that we can assume is the Cloverfield monster. The origin of the monster is another fun thing to debate. Well, I mean, at least it was until the pseudo-sequels were released. People have theorized that the monster was a creature that was dormant under the water, but was awoken by the tanker drilling for oil. Which would make sense given the tanker was the first thing it destroyed. Apparently, it's also a baby monster too. The creature designer, Neville Page, states that it's a scared baby in an unknown environment and that it's just looking for its mother. It's not necessarily destroying things on purpose. This actually makes a lot of sense, since the scenes featuring the monster just show it walking through buildings. It isn't intentionally destroying things, it's trying to find its way around. Same can be said about it destroying the Brooklyn Bridge. The monster didn't smash it deliberately, it was its tail flicking up and down. I mentioned pseudo-sequels a few times now. There were two pseudo-sequels to Cloverfield, one called 10 Cloverfield Lane, and the other being Cloverfield Paradox. I say they're pseudo-sequels because they were originally intended as standalone movies and were shoehorned into the Cloverfield storyline. 10 Cloverfield Lane is a pretty decent thriller, but Paradox is garbage in my opinion. There was also apparently an unofficial sequel that was produced by Michael Stahl David. It's a short film called The Cloverfield Files, and it's located on YouTube. A true sequel to Cloverfield has apparently been in development since 2018. However, a writer was just selected to write the script in 2021, so I don't think we're going to get that sequel just yet. I also read that it will not be a found footage movie, which is kind of a letdown for me. I really like that genre, and it really worked for Cloverfield. Hopefully, if a sequel does come out, it does justice for the original movie, and isn't just loosely tied to it like the other two films. I mean, it's supposed to be tied to it, but I'm wary. Throughout this review, I refer to the monster as, well, the monster. Fans have resorted to calling it Clovey, and the visual effects supervisor from the movie even called it Clover. I'm not a fan of either name, hence why I just refer to it as monster. So the main reason why I put Cloverfield on the Creatures from Beyond category, and not the Creature Feature section, is because of two things. The first being that, well, like I mentioned earlier, in the film, a little past the hour mark, you can catch a glimpse of something falling from the sky. People used to talk about how that was the monster falling from the sky. People would post pictures online and theorize what it was with others online. I bought into that thought process as well. That is, you know, the monster is something that comes from another world. Although, looking back at it now, I would probably subscribe to the monster being dormant under the water theory. Well, in any case, the second reason, and one that I don't really care for, is because of the Cloverfield Paradox. In that movie, they try to say that the monster appears because it came from another dimension. Regardless, however you think of Cloverfield, it's still a fun giant monster film. If you're a fan of giant monster movies and haven't seen Cloverfield, go watch it. You won't be disappointed. <laughs>